Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a painting that's just a little bit different. It's going to be a nice forest with a small footbridge going over a creek. Should be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with our one inch brush and some blue and white, but mostly white, really. Don't want a lot of blue in this today. I might even wipe that out of the brush. Okay, don't want too much. Yeah, that's a nice light sky. I've got a little bit of clear gel and white kind of randomly smooshed around here. I know my sky area is going to be up here. And these are trees, so that's why I said randomly squished, because you don't want it to be really in the trees as much as, as much as possible. I mean, I guess some of it is going to get into the trees, but don't want it there, really. There we go. Next, we'll load up our little filbert brush here with a soft green. And I did have a pencil sketch on here, and I still do. You can see, kind of get the angle of the bridge sort of close, and then everything else. I had a little mountain range thing kind of sketched in here. So anyway, let's go ahead and throw that back in since I completely lost it. There we go. So the reason I sketched such a simple landscape is I sketch it with pencil instead of like with a filbert brush. This is a real place and I want to do it right. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to just toss this right in over here as well. Good. So I got just a little, little tree action there. I kind of like that. Kind of like the look of it, kind of sloping down, nice and soft, and then brush it in. It's pretty wet there. I would normally be kind of concerned about that, but we're not really doing much over here anyway. So we'll kind of call it good. Now let's go ahead and just block in a little bit of color here. I just grabbed the one inch. I started with the filbert and grabbed the one inch because I figured it'd be just that much faster. And it is <laughs> there. So anyway, this is kind of grass, you know, or bushes or anything else we might want to throw here. We can kind of figure that out. This is obviously our river. So you don't want to get too much green down in that area. A little more of this. And your underpainting doesn't have to just be black. I like to put color in my underpainting so you guys know that. And maybe up here, kind of just throw some color, but not too far up with this color. I'd like to I'd like to have the freedom to kind of put other trees and things over this. So tell you what, let's go lighter then. In that case, let's go lighter so we can put darker trees on top of this and they'll stand out. We don't have the sky there, so we have to have some form of color. This will look like little, you know, leaves and things that are soft and in the background there. And we can very easily put brush and things over this. And kind of make a modeled background. It's good for an underpainting. Now I'm just kind of drawing in my lines again, kind of sketching with the filbert brush. You see, I had to do that with the bridge because I almost lost it there, which is okay. I mean, you got to cover things with paint, so. Now I'm just kind of putting it back in. Goes off. This up here goes off. Great. Yeah, that looks decent. So anyway, we can play around with all the angles here, but I kind of like this. See how you can kind of start to make that background look better. <laughs> it looks so odd. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so anyway, you can really tell that's just a small footbridge by putting that tree next to it. I mean, this thing's probably maybe three or four feet, maybe five feet long. It's not big. You know, if your person is standing on it, the person would be like, probably like that easily. So this is like a creek you can jump over. It's more of a decorative bridge. There. There. Just had to Make sure that that wasn't confusing, because I know sometimes scale and proportion, all those good things can be confusing. <laughs> there. Okay, that's that, and I'm just gonna keep rolling in these little, these little guys here. Getting some tree trunk action. Now back here, I wanna start underpainting what's gonna feel like a couple of bushes. Tall little shrub things, and maybe tall grass back here. Anything, it doesn't make any difference really what it is. It's just gotta, I gotta create some layers back here or we're gonna have a flat painting. So let's get some layers worked in. Now I'm gonna tap over and over and over again to create a bunch of leaves up here. And honestly, I don't wanna just leave them the way that they are because it kinda of gives a bit of a repetitive pattern if you're not really careful, and I don't wanna be that careful doing this many. I'm gonna do this whole area. <laughs> it's a lot of leaves. So because I don't wanna be 
that careful see how, see how fast I'm going. I'm going to get these little repetitive dots. So what I'll do is I'll stand back when I'm done with this and I'll come in with a little detail round and I'll sort of mess some of them up. It's as easy as that. There, so allow these to kind of come down. I really want this to be, see how you kind of fill this in with dark, but leaving a lot of that mottled background showing. I put more tree trunks in. I also threw some more tree trunks over here on this side, which of course just helps it to feel very wooded, you know, lots and lots of trees. Make sure there's not too much paint. I did wipe this area. That's why it looks a little muddy up there. I really wiped it with a paper towel. There, because I knew there's just too many layers of paint. Lots of layers, so we can still allow some of that to show through. Just not too much. So now as you can see here, I put just some green, some lighter green, then some darker green, and we got a little bit of a cliff action going. So I've grabbed my clean fan brush, nothing on it, but there will be in a second. <laughs> you guys know how I like to do grass. Actually, I'm probably doing a little too big. I'm gonna make it smaller, I'll do that over there. There we go, yes, that looks, that looks good. I love this grass technique. Right, see how you just stab it? And then, uh, yeah, we do need to actually blend right here. And I, I did start to throw in a couple highlights just for myself. I mean, I want to do that again later to actually make it look nice, but it was just kind of to get my mind wrapped around where we needed to put the, the grass. Sometimes you have to do that when you paint. There. Obviously, you can go back and put the darks, but let's get these lights sort of tapped out first. And over here, this is where you guys you guys get to see what I like to do. And you see it all the time, almost every time I paint grass. Slam it down. We do need a little touch of dark though. Wasn't sure how much dark we wanted because I don't really have a, a good plan on this painting. In case you haven't been able to tell. I'm kind of, because it, like I said, it's a real place. I'm actually putting together a few photos in my mind here. And kind of work with that. Now with some yellow and green, but not too vibrant. Maybe a touch of blue into that just for fun. Again, not, not so vibrant that it seems like a highlight. Just a mid-tone up here. I want to throw some mid-tones in and around this area because I know really this is a big part of the, the painting, these trees. And I really, really want a lot of interest in this area. Now I want some darker blue ones. Blue is always good. Well, okay, blue isn't always good. Blue is usually good when you're trying to create a lot of different variations. I wouldn't overdo this though. Sometimes it looks a little weird. There. You can throw a little red in, that'll give you a brown tone. But you know what? I'm gonna stick more to the greens than the browns. Just me personally. There. A couple of reds up in here, that's always nice. <laughs> there. So, but it's all within the mid-tone range here. Nothing highlighted yet. Now we may need to just absorb a little bit with a paper towel, we'll see. Not even worried about that. There, for the highlighting that is. For the mid-tones, this is very easy, but you know, the more paint you add, the worse off you are, so. Now up in here, I don't wanna, I don't wanna overdo this. I kinda like this tree, I just wanna maybe refine this edge here, there. With, of course, the, the mid-tones, so that we get more than one color happening. One and two color trees are not so interesting, but five or six color trees are super interesting. There. Now I'm just dabbing, see, just in and out, don't, don't slide, just in and out. Kind of roll the paper towel around. So all I'm doing is I'm getting it ready to highlight. So, you know, in a few minutes or an hour or whenever we end up doing it, when we get around to finally putting the accent highlights on, they'll stick very easily. So that's important that you do that. I just thought I'd do that now. When you're painting this many trees, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, things can get a little slippery and that's how you take care of it. There, so don't be frustrated at all. And sometimes it just kind of depends on how much paint you put down. Sometimes you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes it's just fine. <laughs> there we go. So now let's go ahead and just work on our, our beautiful little river. And I went ahead and underpainted our bridge and I sketched in our handrails again and I will have to do it again one more time because I'm about to erase it right there. And then when we highlight the bridge, we'll probably end up erasing it there. Now the bridge on the other hand is something you don't need to wipe, probably won't need to wipe at all. The reason, because there's no medium under there. Remember the trees up there, they had some medium. There's no medium under this bridge, so it's nice and sticky. So I think we'll have some really, really good luck highlighting that. There, good, so 
add some darks, and you honestly just play around with this till you get, get it looking the way you want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start to layer on some grass. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna be the final highlight on here, but I, I just feel like, yeah, let's get some, <laughs> let's get some grass out on here. Some grass highlight, I'm tired of looking at it. Unhighlighted, well, you know, the rest is kind of starting to almost develop, so. You kind of pick around and, you know, if, if you feel like you need to look at something, you know, that has more color on it, well, just stop and throw that color on. You know, it doesn't really matter the timing, as long as you're flexible to, you know, some of it may be changed, so don't put a lot of time into it, but if you want to see it colorized, go do it. There, I'm not going to go much further than that. It's kind of the initial, we'll just call it the initial grass highlight. We'll come back and we'll add some accent highlights over this. It should be really pretty, but I want to I want to get to working on that bridge here pretty quick. It's going to be one of the features of this painting. Now I've mixed up a really nice soft color here. It's this little bit of yellow, touch of red and green and white, of course. Kind of gives us an interesting color, color that we don't mix very often. But now we can kind of start putting in the boards, and obviously, like any structure. You, you want to figure out the perspective and the angle for it to look for it to look good, otherwise it just doesn't look good. I'm not going to worry about my support posts. Those are extremely easy to put in. I'm going to devote all of my energy here on making sure that I, I like the perspective, that everything looks correct, and you know that it's pleasing. There, I will slip in some other colors every once in a while. A little more yellow to indicate sunlight. Now again, this bridge is not big, so we can assume that the light, which is coming from the left and obviously up, is hitting the entire front of the bridge. Where it might start to change is coming back here. It might start slipping into shadow. But it won't be extreme, it'll be simple. Just a little darker. Ah, that's a lot darker. <laughs> How about a little darker? There we go. Now I'm just throwing on a little bit of sunlight. So we have a few mid-tones worked in. We may work in a few more. And I'm just tossing the sunlight kind of out along the, the left-hand edge. I'm even going over, like past the dark, just on my first few initial ones in order to, cr to create a bit of an accent highlight, <laughs> which is kind of fun. like that. Because I really want this... I want these leaves to feel a little bit more open and transparent than sometimes, just because I feel like that would give a little bit more interest to this area, and this area is right above that, the bridge. There we go. So I just feel like it would, it would make for a nice painting. And so when you paint, do things like that, add a little extra detail and interest toward where you want your subject to be, where you want all the attention to be drawn. There as we come down. Just kind of repeat the same process. I am going to highlight into these trees as well. But I think the brightest of the highlights should be right here, out here on the tips. There. Now I'm just finishing up here, pushing back a couple of holes of negative space. Once I was done highlighting, I noticed that, you know, a lot of the trees kind of felt closed in. So I just took some of the sky color and I carefully wiped down that area really good, you know, and then punched it in and then cleaned up around it pretty easy to do actually, it's not so bad. So that creates a little more negative space and some pockets in the trees, which it desperately needed. All right, now I can come back down here and actually already started getting this working. And then I realized I needed, <laughs> needed a, little, a little more work up there, but that's okay. You can start something and then totally change your mind and go do something else, then come back to, to this later. So I'm just adding our final light right out here on the grass. There we go, or just like usually. When we paint grass, I just layer it on. There. And kind of darker as you go away. And then you just take your fan brush. This has got a clean fan brush here. And just tap it again. This is this is fun. This is how you make a big fluffy grass meadow. This is my favorite way. I mean, I've painted grass so many ways in the past, and a lot of ways are nice. This is my favorite. <laughs> hey, it's just me though. There you go. Now we're going to go ahead and drop in a lot of blades of grass. We're going to do this over and over and over again. And I really like that because 
creates a nice detailed effect. I'm going to add a little white maybe to our paint. If it doesn't flow off the brush, make it just a little bit thinner. Yeah, there we go. So uh, maybe play around with that area a little more later. Let's scoot down over here. And because I want that to be big reeds and stuff over there, but maybe over here we got some, some little grasses like this. Cool. <laughs> Good contrast, right? Good contrast. Just drop in. Well, drop in quite a few. I was going to say drop in, you know, as many as you want, but drop in a lot because they really do add a lot of detail. It helps to kind of bring you forward in the painting. It's important, so don't skip out on the on the liner brush work. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brush Line. Thanks for watching.